Hi folks and welcome to God Thing TV. Uh, I'm Pastor Bob and over there is Pastor Pat and he is taking the place of Brooke who today has no voice and she's behind the cameras but she's like to say hi to everyone as always. And we have a really, oh there's her hand, we have a really special guest with us and I'd like to have our pastor uh, introduce him. Well it's my extreme honor today yeah. to welcome our special guest. We're having a conference this weekend called Turning Point here in Miwok Village, California. We're seeking to take our stand to see California be turned in this particular time. But we have a special guest who's come as our keynote speaker, and I want to take this opportunity to welcome Bishop Bill Hammond yeah. to be here with yeah. us today. Yeah. Yeah. Thank this is you awesome. so much for being you. here. We, we met Bishop Bill all oh, 15, 20 years ago, and yeah. we have just always, man, we'd love to have him come to Miwok Village and uh, boy, we never thought the opportunity would really realize, yeah. but we have him with us this weekend. Yeah. And if you're already here this weekend, you're missing out. Last you need night, to get here. Oh man, <laughs> last night he rocked the place. And he's here with his, his brother-in-law, Apostle Leon Walter, who spoke this morning and knocked it out of the park. Uh, but yeah. Bishop Bill, it is so great to have you here in, in beautiful downtown metropolitan <laughs> new what village yes uh, yeah. yeah just it's hard to get around the traffic here it's hard <laughs> <laughs> many bears and deer and everything oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. it's, it's a joy to be here i've um, this is my 66th year of ministry and i started prophesying in 1952 and um, the lord called me in 1982 to raise up a company of prophets and uh, gave me the revelation on malachi chapter 4 and and verse 5 and 6, that God would send the spirit of Elijah before the coming of the Messiah. And then Jesus later said, John the Baptist received that anointing and was the one to fulfill that prophecy to prepare the way for the Messiah to be manifest. But the Lord spoke to me and says, but I'm going to raise up a company of prophets in these last days to prepare the way for Christ's second coming as John the Baptist did the first coming. So we started preaching that and I wrote a book called Prophets and Personal Prophecy and the country described the company of prophets then i said there'll be a move of god to restore the prophets back into the church because uh, some of you young ones out there under 80 you may not have, <laughs> i'll be 85 in july so anybody under 80 is a young one. and uh, i um uh, you know I, I, you may not realize it but back in the 50s and 60s nobody in the church world believed there were modern day prophets uh, they thought the apostles and prophets were done away with after the Bible was written and uh, now yeah. they, they were no longer needed. They thought that was for that. And so they didn't believe there were prophets and apostles. Some still don't. That's right. Yeah. Evangelical and Pentecostal churches don't believe. In fact, one big Pentecostal yeah. denomination made a white paper said you can call yourself prophetic, but don't call yourself a prophet. You can call yourself an apostolic, but don't call yourself an apostle. So I asked the brother, can you call yourself pastoral, but you can't call yourself a pastor? Uh, <laughs> uh, see, Jesus just gave five, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Amen. And I call this the hand of God. And God says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He'll exalt you in due time. So this, Jesus gave all of his ministry to the church through special saints that he anointed. And he gave some his apostolic anointing, some his prophet, some his evangelist, some pastor, teacher. And the pastors wanted the wedding ring on, pray for the pastor, oh my God. Oh. He's stuck with the same 24 hours a day. We prophets and apostles just yeah. come in and give the word and leave us. Okay, pastors, take care of it. Hallelujah. But God has got five-fold ministry. They were given mainly, the only place that's all five mentioned together, because their commission was to equip the saints. That's right. Not just to build great churches, write books, mm -hmm. and travel the world like I do, but to equip the saints. So that's what we started doing. And then in 1988, the prophetic movement was birthed. And, we, and um, we, I, wrote, I wrote a great big manual on how to teach, train, activate people in the prophetic. And we've trained and activated those who've trained and activated. In 1984, there was a old prophet by 64 years old. Now he's a young prophet. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> he was, he was eight, I was 48 and he was 64. And he said, Brother Bill, God shows me that in five years there's going to be a move of God take place at your place that go around the world and affect the ministry of the church. Four, four years later, in 1988, the prophetic movement was birthed. But then he said something that was unique. He said, and God's going to give you anointing to 
re reproduce, reproducers who are reproduce, reproducers. Yeah. And out of the, all the prophetic companies, we're the only one that started teaching and training and activating people in the prophetic. And over the last 30 years, we've trained over half a million on every continent of the world. And we have there are 35 churches in China that's moving the prophetic, two schools of the Holy Spirit in Russia and all around the world. And I found I have never found anybody I couldn't activate in the prophetic. I love that. Wow, that's See, wonderful. <laughs> and you have to realize there's five levels of the prophetic. There's a spirit of prophecy in Revelations 19.10 where it says the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. The last night I activated them one-on-one -on -one and prophetic. Mm -hmm. And I said, all you have to do is that the Christ in you testify to that fellow member there. And he's always got something to say and willing to say it. And 70% of the people got a prophetic word right. and shared it with them. Which that, was right. that was right. That's right. Really and what a some odd people prophesy. All my three children and their mates prophesy. Uh, and all my 11 grandchildren and their mates prophesy. And half of my 17 great grandchildren prophesy. So it's, it's an anointing. It, it's, a, it's a faith. It's all about grace and faith. Yeah. I, I, when I was in Bible college, I started uh, way back when I was 19. I started a 40 day fast every month. Just because I knew if I could just fast 40 days and 40 <laughs> nights, God would say, Every move, month. <laughs> move over Roberts, move over Brown, and behold, Hamlin coming. Never did make those 40 days, but next month I started a 40 day fast. <laughs> and uh, so, but, the, but then I. Uh, Lord, I, I wanted angelic visitation like Branham had. I wanted visions, dreams, revelations. He didn't give them to me. And he finally asked me, after he gave me that anointing to reproduce, he said, what would, if you'd have fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and you came out with this anointing like I gave you in 1973 to prophesy over endlessly over people, all by faith and grace, what would you have told people? To get this anointing, you'd have probably said, "Fast forty days and nights, like I did." <laughs> you'd get it. If you had an angelic visitation, you'd said, "Get an angel, and then you'll get this man ministry." Or if you'd had an out-of-body experience, take it to heaven and back. He said, "But how are you going to get, tell them to activate an angel coming to visit you? How yeah, are you going to activate anything like that? Uh, out-of-body experience?" Uh, but he says, "I gave you this gift, grace, faith." Faith in the gift and the divine enabling of God to step out in faith. You're saved by faith. You're filled with the Spirit by faith. You walk by faith. Everything's by faith. That's so right. we take all the spooky spiritual out of moving it. in the supernatural. <laughs> you just flat believe God. Just like you got, when you got somebody laid hands on you, you receive the Holy Spirit. And somebody said, wait now for God to do something. God, the Holy Ghost doesn't need to speak in tongues. He anoints you. So I remember this one time this big Englishman came to me. And back in the charismatic movement, he says, oh, he says, uh, uh, Dr. Hammond, I want that glossolalia, you know, I want that charismata with glossolalia. I said, okay. So you want the baptism of the Holy Ghost and talking to him? Yes. yes. <laughs> so I laid hands on him and said, in Jesus' name, receive the Holy Spirit. And he went, mmm. Mm, mm. I said, brother, brother, the Bible said, open your mouth wide and God will fill it. So he was very obedient and hungry, so he went, uh -huh. I, said, I said, no, no, you, to, to speak in tongues, you got to open and shut your mouth. And so he went like a guppy fish. I said, I, said, I, said, I, said, I said, brother, look at me, let me tell you something. What I'm telling you, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit's gift, or the gift of the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit's gift. So the Holy Spirit's gift to you is your spirit language. He gives you the ability for your spirit to direct your vocal organ right. to speak in a language you've never heard your before. Spirit. And it's right. not, it has anything to do with your brain. In fact, 1 Corinthians 14 uh, talks about the fact that when you pray, your mind is inactive. And they have right. uh, scientifically proven that by uh, head Brain scans, right, brain right, scans right, absolutely. that your brain is inactive when you're speaking tongues. And those nuns and evangelicals praying, theirs is very active. So <laughs> I said, it's by faith. Now, when I lay hands on you again, don't don't speak English anymore, even old English. And I said, start speaking in tongues. <laughs> he says, how do I do it? By faith. Just I your lips and tongues go free, just oomph and go and go. It's hard to explain. It better felt than tell it. And something. So I laid hands on him again and he started going, tut, 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 tut. I said, my God, brother, push your clutch in, change gears. You want to cry out to death? Just speak it out. So he said, I said, you articulate, speak it. So he started with, that's it, that's it, you got it. I love it. Now, you know, Pentecost, we prayed for you, massage you and speak it Until out. Until you did it, huh? <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's, it's all by faith. The same way you got saved, the same way you got Filled with the Spirit, the same way you move in the gifts of the Spirit. That's it's all by faith. grace, faith, and gifting. That's and that's the reason you can prophesy, and all, every saint has a gift to them. 
of the dying gifts. There's word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning the spirits, what they call the revelation gifts, yeah. the vocal gifts, tongues and interpretation, tongues and prophecy, and then the power gifts, gifts of faith, healing, and miracles. And I'm trying to get people to step out by faith and do it. And you get what you preach. I tell preachers, don't be so upset about your congregation, they're so part of your preaching. And so, if you want healing, <laughs> preach healing. Preach healing. <laughs> if you want unity, preach unity. If you want Problems, preach problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever man sows, that he also reaps. So if you want miracles, start preaching miracles till you get them. You preach it till you produce it. And we started teaching on the prophetic. Now we've trained over half a million around the world and every continent of the world. And people are teaching and training and activating people in the prophetic. Now I'm moving in warfare and teaching people how to be warriors in God's third world war and God's army of the Lord movement that we're in now. And we're here to activate them this week. And tomorrow night we're going to go to war and do warfare, tear down strongholds and bring the kingdom of God and make an open heaven and see God's glory manifest. And we wish you could be there and we are part, but we wrote a book on God's weapons of war that shows you exactly yes. how to take dominion, rise up in the spirit and fulfill your destiny. And these brothers here, uh, they're doing it and they're fulfilling it right here in this area. Amen. Amen. We're doing our best. <laughs> yeah, Bishop Hammond, it's, it's just wonderful uh, hearing your uh, passion for this yeah. uh, because you can tell the Holy Spirit, obviously. And by the way, it's our prayer for our audience too. Uh, lately, it's been on our heart, both Brooke and I am praying about it, is that um, our our audience would really be touched by Holy Spirit, even through yeah. through the camera, through wherever they're at. No limitation. No limitation. And uh, I felt uh, when I found out we were going to actually get you on here was that you would actually prophesy to the nations through here that this yes. is. And I believe you you're actually doing that because I you know I hear yeah. a spirit of God you yeah. know you're doing it now um, and that there's a word for people out there yeah. and this activation like you say you've had this mandate. For yeah. many years now to activate in the prophetic, which is incredible, yeah. you know. I have personally <laughs> prophesied over fifty thousand individuals, wow. from babes in arms to kings of nations and presidents of nations. Oh, wow! <laughs> and we've trained over half a million with those I've trained. That's trained. I got six. I might, you know, I got four generations in the natural, but we got seven, eight, nine in the spirit. We're trained, trained, trainers, trainers. You know. I love but it. I'd, I'd like to speak to them. I want you to know mm -hmm. if you're born again and then you're. You, you, you've got the faith. See, the greatest miracle in the universe is a born-again experience. That's right. See, because God has to, God made the right. world as there was no resistance, but he has to get your free will to say yes. And then he has to make a new creation out of you. And you actually, he's just born again as a new creation in Christ. You're much a new creation as Adam was. In the natural, you're the, the spirit, right. the inner man. And then when he fills you with the spirit, James says, no man can tame my tongue, but the Holy Ghost can. And for that, that's the, the father of all miracles is your born again experience. The mother of all miracles is your baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. And the kids are the gifts of the Spirit. So you've already <laughs> exercised faith for the two greatest miracles in the universe and in the church and in God. So now I want to just tell you that I want you to step up by faith. There you go. If you're not, if you're not in a church where they're teaching on the gifts or activating in the Spirit, find some place where they are, but step up by faith. And say, God, I'm just believing you to give me a word of knowledge. Or I'm going to pray for that. We have prophetic teams that go out to the streets and they ask God for a word of knowledge. You'll lead them to That's a right. person and they'll start talking to them and say, oh, How are you doing? That back problem you got. Oh, it's, how'd you know? It's God told me He wants to heal you. He loves you. Uh, and then words of knowledge, words of wisdom, discern the spirits. And then they'll prophesy to Him. And we get them one to the Lord. We've even got them in the prison training people to hear the voice of God and prophesy and yep. minister. And <laughs> it, it's good for anybody and everybody. The supernatural should be natural to a child of God. That's good. Uh, we've been born again. We're a new creation. That's good. Peter says we're partakers of his divine nature. So if we're yes. partakers of his divine nature, the divine things should be natural to us. So you don't have to hype yourself up in Pentecost when I was raised, you had to get the monkey anointing. You, know, you tried to you tried to get stirred up, get activated, and then yeah, I mean because the more you vibe, the more anointed you are. And boy, if you could get vibe and oh, you was really anointed. And then when I started moving the gills, I found out spirit has no feeling. You have to get in, in souls. Your emotions are in your soul. And and uh, then feelings out here, the five senses. And so when I'd prophesy for people by the hour, my body would be feeling dead, my soul would be inactive, but you just open the door and let the spirit flow. And the spirit flows without emotion because faith, love, all that is emotionless until it hits the soul. But you just prophesy by the spirit. 
prophesied by the Spirit. And I, I prophesy sometimes I don't feel a thing in the flesh or the soul, but my spirit is clear, and I hear the voice of God, and I speak the voice of God. And if you've been trying to be more spiritual, be able to manifest God's grace and presence more, well, get trying to quit, quit trying to get up in the heavenlies and out somewhere, yeah. trying to get some special anointing. It's Christ is in you. That's right. He's in you. And he's not jumping up and down and flipping and flopping in you. He's just there. And you can just open up and let him speak. If you have faith, faith, well, you got to believe. All things are possible to them that believe. Believe means you acknowledge, you've got it, you can do it. God gave it to you, and you're going to glorify him with it. Amen? So if you've never moved in the gifts of the Spirit, I just command right now in the yeah. name of Jesus, <laughs> I speak that anointing into you, that you're going to be bold enough to believe, to see, yes. believe, to hear, Lord, and to God. believe, to speak. Do what it. God shows you, Do and thank God confirm it. You say, well, well I, I don't know where this God. You don't know. It's not for you. It's for somebody else. And I've been doing this for 66 years, and that still takes faith because your flesh never gets comfortable with moving in the Spirit. You, you learn that. Well, I, I don't feel, you never feel comfortable moving where your, your mind likes to stay in control. That's the reason some people have a hard time praying in tongues because they want to control it. But you let the Spirit flow. You've got to have faith that the Holy Spirit will direct your tongue to pray intelligent, wise, mind, and wisdom. In fact, the Bible says he prays according to the mind and mind will of God. Yeah. So you have to trust that. Same way you trust the impressions. Now, I'm a, I'm a what you would call a major prophet after all these years. And, uh, but I, I don't get visions and dreams and revelations like some people do. I, I just get slight impressions. Let me give you an example. My One of my prophets called me from California when I was headquartered in uh, San, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and he said, we got to move out. This lady said, we could lease the house for another year, and we got to move out in one week, and, and, and there's just nothing rental. That was the days where there wasn't anything for rent or sale anywhere. And so he said, would you ask it, Bishop, and, and see if your Lord would show you something? So I prayed a little bit and said, well, let me tell you, I got a slight impression then just check it out and see. I said, go about 10, 12 miles out east, and you'll see a road sign there uh, going up through the woods. There. It says something about an arena or aquarium or something, but it's horses up there. And you're up there, and you'll see some horses around. And I said, go up this top of this hill, and the man will be putting a drill on a sign in there that says, for rent, rent that house. I said, okay, I'll check it out. So we went out there, found the road, drove up there, went through this a place where they're sure in, where they train horses. Went up there, there was a man putting the sign down, and he rented the house. Now, to me, it was just a slight impression. See, if people want to flash in lights or bombard and you want to do some, it, it, it's just Christ. It's that, like Elijah, there's a steel, it wasn't in the rain, wasn't in the rain, right. it wasn't in the fire, it wasn't in the shaking. It was that still small voice. That's right. That slight impression, because he just impressed you, and you got to have faith to speak it. You have to have faith to speak it. So check it out. God doesn't God doesn't uh, condemn you if you make a mistake. He condemns you for not trying at all. You know. That's, that's you, you ever tried to learn a bicycle? I I, I right. tried once. I rode horses all my life, and I bicycle or a, a motorcycle just didn't respond rightly. <laughs> the neck rang doesn't whoa or go. It just it's got its own mind. And uh, but uh, you know you you can't learn to ride a bicycle sitting still. Somebody's got to start you moving. And you, you learn by balance and go as you move. So you learn to move in the gifts, to move in God by doing. They said, Jesus said, if any man will do my will, he'll know. And you'll know. And then Hebrews 5, 12 says, yeah. those, 14, 5, 14, those who are reason of use. That's right. That's one of the main scriptures we right. used over the last that 40 reason years. Of use. Reason of use. They discern good and evil. That'd be the mind of Christ, your imagination, God's will, man's mm -hmm. will. So you learn to tell which is which. And I, over the years, I can tell whether I'm speaking from my spirit or speaking from my mind. But you, it, you don't do that overnight. It takes a period of time. It's like getting married, not trying to understand your wife overnight. It takes a lifetime. Then you're still figuring it out. So <laughs> let me encourage you. Let me encourage you. God wants to arise and remember the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every saint. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Then it missed the nine manifestations of the Spirit. Notice it says manifestations. They're not given for you to have and hold. They're given to you to manifest. manifest. And so let me encourage you. God wants you to do it. It's for you. So if you're not, if you're only born of the Spirit, then get filled with the Spirit. Then get active and manifest in the Spirit. And you will be greatly filled and thrilled. And God will bless you. We love you. God bless you. Good to be with you. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough, oh. Bishop Hammond and, uh, and Pastor Pat for joining us yeah. uh, today. And uh, I know out there... You tuned in, but you weren't expecting this. 
And uh, you got some uh, education, oh boy. some anointing, some activation today. Uh, grab onto it. Find a good Holy Ghost church near you um, and jump in. Brooke, yeah? Brooke could teach him how to Brooke, prophesy. She can Brooke, she prophesy. can. She as soon as her voice, voice gets back. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, right now she's not going to Right, yeah. that's great. That's great. But I want to, yes. So I want to uh, thank you all for joining in. Um, you know, Go down there. Look, I'm not the person that does this whole thing. It's usually Brooke, but somewhere down there, there's like comments, comment. I do answer your comments and I do pray for you. And uh, we have whole prayer teams that pray if you have uh, needs. They're also down below, somewhere down there. I don't know <laughs> that Brooke does this. Um, there's also a, a place where we will, if you're interested in the Lord, uh, and learning more about him, you just tune into that, and uh, we'll talk to you about Jesus and lead you to him. You'll have a wonderful life. God will bless you and keep you and all that. And uh, so, if you like this, like us. Somewhere there, thumbs up, like, whatever you guys do out there in that wonderful land. And uh, we would just thank you. And I'm sure I've messed up and not ended this the way Brooke normally ends it. That's okay. She's going to fix it. All right. Love you all and thank you. And thank you. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good for you. God bless. Yes, sir.